meeting to order. Uh, I have Alex. I got Dr. Ron is here. Uh, can you hear me, Ron? Yes. Can you, yes. Can you, um, I can't. You know, I can't you, hear you. I, yeah, I know you can hear me. Ron Pusha, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, great. So, Dr. Ron's on. Nora. Okay, I'm going to call the meeting to order. Right now, Alex is on, uh, Dr. Ron Pucci, Nora, Councilman, uh, Rafika, and Sean, and Avenki. Um, I was asked to Mary to have the police report because they are sometimes, um, they, have to, they have to leave early, Mary, okay? Sure, okay. No oh, that's no problem. I'll, I'll go whenever you need me to. Okay. I want to introduce to everyone uh, Sergeant Rebecca Lea, who who will be a another a policeman making a report every month with Sean. We have some new policemen coming this month. So um, who's going to make the report, John? Well, I. <laughs> I'll, I'll start by just saying, um, you know. Um, can, you, can you be a little louder? Can you be a little louder? Can you hear me better now? Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, Detective Sergeant Rebecca Leah has basically taken over as the sergeant in charge of the Community Relations Bureau. Okay. Um, I'm overseeing the uh, the investigations as the, as the captain of investigation. So I'm going to be overseeing um the community relations bureau and the detective bureau at of the police department Rebecca okay the person that's going to be uh supervising the location over at 935 hamilton street and okay. also going to be your point of contact as a supervisor for the human relations commission so i just want to introduce everybody to rebecca leah and she'll give you guys the rest of the uh report okay Good evening, everyone. Hi. Hi, Rebecca. Hello. So, uh, yes, this will be my first time with the meeting, and we'll see how it goes if I'm going to come back. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, yes. Uh, as we said at the beginning part, I was, Jen Sean just said that I was recently promoted, and so I'm taking over his spot in the building, and I'm going to try to keep the Community Relations Bureau moving along. As best as we can right now, and hopefully, fingers crossed, you know, by the end of the year, we're going to be in full swing with all the programs that we have, we had planned, and we'll be able to get back to uh, soon, as soon as COVID passes us. And I hope to even grow a little bit more, maybe develop some more programs that we can do with the community. And uh, so I'm new, and within the next month or so, I should have some more members to my uh, unit. And I'm going to say the bulk of them are going to be all Franklin uh, born and bred. So, okay. That, uh, you know, that they know the community, they grew up here, went to school here. So they'll be able to offer a, a different in, a insight when we're Good. doing the programs because they'll know. Okay. Is there anything that you want to report that's been happening that you can report on? without compromising uh well I, to be honest i think there's a lot of calls have just been you know covid related unfortunately so you know we just want to encourage everyone of course to keep wearing their masks and wash their hands stay six feet away and if you're feeling ill i mean call us definitely the ambulance will come out and take you to the hospital um i think with one of the good things Unfortunately, I can say to come out of this is the porch pirates have uh, calmed down because a lot of people are home now. Right. So a lot of the burglaries that we were having, believe it or not, they still come out in this kind of weather. You and I might think it's too cold or, or <laughs> too maybe rainy to be out, but right. uh, they didn't come out in anything. But we have seen a significant decrease in those kinds of reports. So, okay, great. Okay, um, anything? No, the robberies, unfortunately, and stuff like that. Say that again. Anything what? Anything new? Because because we're always told to make 
a show to lock our cars and close the garage doors. So, uh, anything happening with that or? Um, no, I mean, as, as always, if there, um, and again, th there hasn't been too much. I think that 9 p.m. routine that we've started on Facebook and, and the social media has really helped because uh, I think that those numbers, if I'm not mistaken, have gone down as well. The the car auto burglaries. Uh, okay. People are learning to lock their cars, and unfortunately, even if it's in your driveway, it's not safe. And okay, thank you. Uh, does anyone have any questions for our police officers before I continue the meeting? Okay, thank you. Rebecca, you're welcome. Thank you. Welcome. You can stay on. Okay. Um, I want to continue the uh, a meeting. We are honored. We are honored this evening to have our uh, a superintendent who I just put in as a panelist, John Ravley, and Mary Clark, who, who some of you know has been in this school system for a long time, and usually. When anyone, especially the newspapers, want to know something about what's happening in the school system, they call Mary Clark. I have I have known her for a long time, and I can tell you, she, whenever I have a question about the Board of Education, Mary is there to answer it. So um, Mary's going to give us a presentation, and Mr. Superintendent, if you want to add to that, please do. I promised Mary I would be here in support, but I certainly will answer any questions anyone has and uh, just wanted to say hello to everybody and congratulations to our officers, Sean, congratulations. Um, and <clears throat> certainly Mary is more than capable, uh, but I'll be here in support. She has a nice presentation. There's been lots of changes. I mean, this has been a crazy time in education, uh, a crazy time in our schools. This is not what we're built for. We're built for community. We're built for bringing people together. And this pandemic has us doing everything uh, opposite to that. So um, Mary has been there in helping to create all the programs. Of course, she's a senior level administrator for those that 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 might know, not know. She has a lot of titles. Uh, she's been part of our testing program. Thank you, Dr. Karazi, for helping us with that. Um, she's been you know, she was instrumental in helping us to create our response plan. So she has a really good handle on it district wide. So I'm going to let Mary take it from here and I'm going to hang right in there. We'll answer questions together and then okay. uh, we'll go from there. Go ahead, Mary. Thank you so much. Okay, Mary. Thank you, you Mr. Valley. Um, Gary, did you need to share your screen with me or something so that I can uh, do the presentation? Let me, let me see if I can. Otherwise, sure. I can, I'll just speak to it and then, you know, I can send it to you guys after the fact if you'd like. Okay, I'm sharing my screen now, but I don't, I don't okay. know. So let me see if this shows up for everyone else. Can you see a presentation, everyone? We're not, just not, not right yes, now. We can. Okay. Yeah. So. You couldn't see the presentation, right? We no, we can thing. see your screen, not the presentation. Okay. I think we are seeing, we are seeing Gary Rosenthal's screen, actually. Uh, yeah. Right, okay. All right. Gary, I think you have to let her share this. There you go. Screen. Okay. Yeah. Um, why don't you go on, Mary, and, and, and I'll try to do it. But okay. I don't no, just make her make her a host if you want, and then she can do it. Okay, now how do I do that, Alex? What do I hit on the bottom? Yeah, if you if you let, uh, click on the person, okay, you should um, be able to do that. Okay. I'm trying to find out. I'm hitting on Mary, but. On her name in the participants list, are there three dots? Yeah, just click on that, gives you more options, and then you will be able to do that. 
let's see. Huh. Mary, go ahead with your presentation. Uh, we can do it like has this. One second. Um, all right. I'm going to put it up like this. I, I can't seem to change that. Okay, hang on one sec. Let me see if I can do it like this. I, I, have, I have you. Uh, I can't. Okay. Let's see. Oh, I, I can't oh. do it. All right, no problem. Make your presentation, Mary. It's all right. Uh, that's okay. Okay, so 2020, the 2020 school year um, has been a crazy time for all of us as as the whole year has been right um in a mr logman our assistant superintendent for curriculum and instruction the other day described it as you know education in a world that seems upside down to everyone um so earlier this school year um before the school year started we had gotten directives from governor murphy as well as from the new jersey department of education and part of those um, directives included the the um, the assembly of a committee and the creation of a reopening plan. It was a plan that every school district in the um, state had to come up with called the re restart and reopening plan for schools. Um, part of that directive was that we must start this. We must plan to start the school year having some if not all in person instruction about 10 minutes later we were directed that we also needed to in um offer fully remote instruction for any parent who did not want their child to come to school for in-person instruction um and then close to the beginning of school there was an announcement that if you were not ready to open in September, that you could request a delay in in-person instruction with a, a firm date and the reasons why you did not, you were not, you did not feel you were ready to open the schools for in-person instruction in September. So we, the district, Franklin Township Public Schools, opened in September in a fully remote mode. Um, the reasons for this is that as we were approaching the beginning of the school year, um, personnel had gotten quite a few requests for leave from our certificated staff members. And we were afraid that we were not going to be able to have enough teachers that were familiar with the students in the curriculum in the classroom at that time. And to bring substitutes in in that challenging situation then would have been problematic. So we decided to ask uh, permission from the executive county superintendent to delay the opening till later on in September, October for certain populations and then for the general education population of students right, be right after the Thanksgiving break. So we were given that permission. Um, and during that time, we went through all of the leave requests to find out what it was that were prompting people to request those and then to address them. So some of them had to do with childcare situations. So we had a relationship with the YMCA and were able to offer our teachers who needed um, childcare solutions um, an option for them to, to go through the YMCA for some daycare um, facilities. Um, some of their concerns had to do with the um, air conditioning and ventilation systems in some of our older schools. So the board um, authorized a comprehensive HVAC um, field assessment, which is on our website. So as the, the company went through all of the schools um, and made a checklist of things that needed to be addressed, which was taken care of by our, um, uh, our staff, buildings and ground staff, um, and then pretty much okayed all of the other rooms that were going to be used. 
So we opened on, um, we gradually brought back students um, in September, October, October, started to bring back students. They were students in our most neediest populations. So they were like our spe special education students in our self-contained programs because those students benefit the most from having that in-person one-on-one instruction time with their, um, with their teacher. Um, they also have a lot of therapies, which were also at that point granted the opportunity to, to be done in person. Um, the other group that was brought back shortly after that is um, were the Road to Success Alternative School students, because they also have a specialized program where they meet later in the day and actually go off ca our campuses um, to the Career Center um, at, so at the Somerset Educational Commission. So. Um, they don't mix with the other students so much. So we thought those were better groups to bring back because they were self-contained and um, therefore wouldn't be with other students and they're sharing the germs, so to speak. Um, by, by November 30th, we had given the opportunity for all students in the district and general education programs to come back to school for in-person instruction should they um, should they their family request it. Our program options um, that we offered were the fully remote program option, which we call FRIPO. Um, in this option, we had four days of synchronous learning with teachers and peers in their classroom. So these students were home online and interacting with their, their peers and their teachers um, in the classroom. Um, there were periods during that day of asynchronous instruction, and there were teacher ability. There were there was the ability for these students to reach out to their teachers later on in the day after the school day ended. The school day, um, the synchronous part of the school day ended. The synchronous part of the school days have been shortened days, one to, to reduce the amount of screen time for the students. And two, to then give that opportunity for to, for teachers in the afternoon to follow up with students who maybe didn't attend to find out why they weren't there or to find out if there were any problems in the family. So that gives that the teachers the latter half of the day to um, to follow up with and plan for the next day. Um, the both the fully remote and the hybrid program have what we called asynchronous Fridays. So on Fridays. The teachers have that ability to plan, go for professional development, and students are given assignments which take them the, the, the hours in that school day on Friday to complete. Um, this gives them a break again from that, that following the, the school day screen time and has the ability for some flexibility in their schedule as well. Um, hybrid, the hybrid model is, um, again, four days a week of synchronous instruction. This is when the students come in Monday through Thursday. Um, they have asynchronous Fridays as the fully remote, uh, students do, and their teacher contact is also available in the afternoons. Now, when they come into school, what it is, is they're divided into two groups, three groups, really. So. We took the pool of people who wanted to come in for in person instruction and then divided that into two groups, the blue and the gold. So the blue, the blue, we, we, the Anna Washington, who is the assessment um, person, uh, supervisor in the district assessment, planning, um, they, she ran the numbers and the, the siblings and everything so that this way. If you if you had a child in say the high school and the middle school and and one of the elementary schools, we tried to make it so they were all in the same group, so they'd all be going to school the same day and all be home the same day, giving that when they were home the ability to um, have um, babysitters maybe built in with older siblings, and if they were all in, they'd all be getting on a bus, even if they were going at different times, they'd be all be leaving the household. Um, the way we structured the program is that for one period of one week of four days, the blue group would come in. Everyone would be asynchronous and home on Fridays. And then the following week, we would have the gold group come in. This limited the amount of exposed, li limited the amount of children that were exposed to each other in, in order to um, work within the, the, the capacities of the room to work within how many um, different groups of people 
the children were exposed to for COVID reasons. Um, right now, now over, over the course of the school year, the numbers have gone up about families who've chosen the fully remote program versus the um, uh, hybrid program. But right now we are about 70%. So 70% of our students are fully remote. They stay home and learn online. 30% um, come in and of that 30%, the blue and the gold team are split pretty evenly. And then we have a small population of kids we call the green, the green group. The green group are those students who started out the school year in those special education programs. So now instead of just benefiting from being in school, they actually come both weeks. So they are always in in-person instruction, except for those Fridays. Does anybody have, it's a, little, it's a little difficult to follow along with me just talking. I'm sorry if I just feel like I'm going on and on. Does anybody have any questions? If, if, if you have any, well, let me unmute. If you have any questions, unmute yourself and ask the question. You're, you're all muted. So if, if anybody wants to ask a question. I had a question, but it was more for the end of the presentation. Is this that, or are you asking for clarification questions? It's, it's Mary, uh, you have to understand, we have two high school uh, students as part of our commission, and this is Arian, who, who is a high school student. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. If well, it's it's more of a it's more if, if this is just for if there are any questions up to now. So if you want to wait, you can wait till the end. Yeah, my questions are general, so I'll wait to the end. Oh, okay, wonderful. All right. So going on at uh, the beginning of the school year, like I said, the Department of Education had requested that we come up with a plan, and that plan is called the Restart and, Re and Reopening Plan, Restart and Recovery Plan to Reopen School. Um, it's they had given us guidance. We work with a policy um, service that um, helped us frame out the plan itself. Um, and then it's been updated a few times since then. I was just going to hit the highlights of the plan. Part of that plan was to form a restart and reopening committee. Now that committee is comprised of supervisors from the district, administrators from the district, parent representative, um, their uh, the board of education president. Um, so we got a, a few different voices in, in, in the creation of the plan, as well as having surveys to parents and families as we were creating it about what kind of um, program they would like. Would they, would they prefer that their child stayed home if they, if, they, if they did stay home? Would they prefer more synchronous activities or asynchronous activities? Um, did they need transportation? Did, were they afraid of putting their child on the bus in terms of transportation and exposure to COVID? Um, did they need child care solutions for after or child care solutions if they were hybrid? So we tried to address all of that in the plan as well as the guidance given to us by the, the New Jersey DOE. Um, so the, some of the highlights of the plan were um, you needed to describe your cleaning um, practices, which we have um, uh, on the website, the, the cleaning protocols. So in addition to the regular cleaning that's done, there are deep disinfecting cleaning done um, in the isolation rooms of each of the schools, as well as in exposed areas if someone goes home with suspected COVID or with, um, with had, had been um, known to have a positive case. Um, we had to deal with capacity issues. So each of the classrooms, and I'll send you guys the, 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 um, the PowerPoint so that you can see just the way some of the classrooms are set up. Well, you know, it, it, uh, Mr. Shaw, that, that how they're set up, right? But um, that there are uh, every other desk, all the desks are facing forward. There's a social distance of six feet around each of the, uh, each of the, the, the children, as they, you know, as they come into the building and as they sit at their desk. Um, the flow within the building we had to talk about. So there, the stairs go up where the stairs go down. On the walls, you'll see reminders to keep socially distant. Um, personal protective uh, uh, wear. So there are masks. We have extra masks in case a student doesn't have masks. Everyone is required to wear a mask um, in school, with the exception of those who whose health would be affected by it, but they need to have a note and things like that in order to to show that. Um, 
We have screenings. When you come into the building, everyone's temperature is taken, whether it's the administrative building here or each of the school buildings. There's either kiosks that you walk up to that will identify you um, or and or just say what temperature you have. If you have over 100 temperature, you're taken to the isolation room. Um, if not, then you're just allowed to go into the into the to your classroom. Um, the other guidance was um, a response to um, symptoms and contact tracing. So this is probably the, the the part of it, the plan that is the most happens every day. People are the most interested in what happens if someone comes in and they're sick. So if you you have a temperature when you come in. You're taken, you're, to, you're escorted to the isolation room, which is a separate room from the nurse's office. And there you're seen by the nurse and your temperature's taken again. So it might be that you just had a lot of clothes on and you were warm and now you're fine. So then you get to go to class. You know, and the nurse asks you about your, your other symptoms and your health. Um, before you even get to school, actually, I, I'm sorry, you start out every morning where the parent will fill out a health screening form to say that their child doesn't have symptoms and hasn't been exposed to anyone with COVID. Then they get to school, they're given that other that that other test. Um, if they wind up for whatever reason not feeling well and in the isolation room, the nurse will call the parent to come pick them up and then they'll they'll go home. Um, then the nurse will follow up to make sure that how they're feeling, if they've um, tested, that did they go get tested? And if that test comes back positive and we become aware of it as a district, then it's reported to the Department of Health by the person who gave that person the test. Um, we become aware that there's a positive case in the district. We do our own contact tracing to find out if there has been anybody in the district that has been uh, exposed to that person when they're, um, when they're contagious. We send letters and ask them to quarantine, whether they're staff or other students. And then um, we report to the building in general that someone in that building has tested positive just so that they are aware of um, the situation. Now, subsequent to that, now we've started posting a chart on our website of how many cases we have in the district um, of positives by school, by staff, by student. Um, the other part of the plan that we needed to address was um, was meals how would we feed our students if we were remote or some of them were remote so um once a week we when when everyone is remote and even when we have hybrid students coming in once a week we deliver meals the same way we did last year during the school year when we were all remote it's a once a week bulk pickup on fridays at four of our schools in the morning and it was also a bus that had the heads on over to the more remote parts of town with um, with meals in there. Um, we average about 700 to 850, 750 to 850 families per week who are able to pick up those meals. Um, and then in, in varying, they, they are given bulk. So on a Friday, you could pick up meals for the whole next week, uh, breakfast and lunches. When the, when the student hybrid students are in school, they are given um, meals to go at the high school and the middle school level because they, their schedule doesn't really apply, doesn't really have time for a, a meal. They take them home. And at the elementary level, they, they have one of their meals. They have the ability to have one of their meals in the building, again, socially distant, all <laughs> protocols in place, um, and then they take the other meal home with them. Um, transportation, many, many people waived the transportation and so they drop off their, their, their children um, on their own. And if they did take the transportation, there are um, protocols, it's every other seat. Um, when, when they get on and off the bus, it's first on, last off, so that, that there's less passing and less exposure. Um, the other things that we had to hit in the plan were about field trips, extracurricular activities, athletics, use of facilities. And those have really been guided by whatever the uh, pro the state protocols are on in terms of social distancing and allowing people into our building. Um, so that was the part about the plan. So what do we do, like, in terms of you have the pro pro the protocols for COVID, you have all of that. 
logistical things, but you still now have to educate students and keep track of what your goals were and, and, and what you wanted to get accomplished before this all happened. So some of the things that we found were what we call challenges and opportunities, right? So one of them was um, staying connected with the students, those that are home all the time, to make them feel like they're part of that school community still. And one of the ways that that's been done at some of our elementary schools is that, um, especially McAfee, they, when I asked the principals to, what should I talk about about your school? McAfee was like, please talk about our morning announcements because our parents love them and things like that. So every day they have a different student who does a little recording of themselves, a little video of themselves doing the morning announcements. And they start with the, the Pledge of Allegiance, they do the flag, and then the, the, there'll be a video of, of one of the students and they'll talk about like what book they, they're reading. They'll talk about their um, positive behavior in schools, their PBIS, um, you know, affirmations. What do we do today? We, we stretch higher at McAfee. Um, they, they get their parents involved, the little ones, in terms of helping them to tape. So it becomes like a family experience for them. Um, so that's one way to stay connected. Another one of the challenges that we had early on was when we had to go fully remote last school year was to make sure that all of our students had the ability to go online um, to, to, especially now this year, where it's a lot more synchronous activities to have that capability, that internet and that computer capability. So we made a point last year and then continue to do it this year is to make sure that everyone who needs a device, every household that needs a device was able to get a Chromebook. And then even further to get the internet, we were able to give um, out like 470 some odd hotspots to people who needed that internet capability as well. Um, and that's an ongoing um, challenge as those machines break, they come back in, they get a, a substitute computer. Um, Edward, Ward is our, Edward Ward is our supervisor of instructional technology and him and his team have done a tremendous job in terms of getting all of those um, those uh, devices out as well as the, the director of technology, Andrew Neckel and um, his, his team of um, tech, the tech guys, I call them. Um, They've been tremendous in getting that out there and then to be able to give um, more information to parents and families about the platforms that are being used and how to navigate those things. Um, and then another one of the challenges that we have encountered, I think everyone has because of COVID is that sense of isolation and, and sometimes how it stirs up mental health issues. So late last year and now fully more this year, we've partnered with um, Rutgers Behavioral Health um, and we have a dedicated um, mental health person at our virtual, virtually at our schools, who gets um, who gets um, referrals from the principal and from our student assistance um, counselors to um, for students to follow up with students who might have attendance or behavioral issues or something going on at home where they really need that extra help. Um, Okay, I'm going to go to the next couple slides. If anybody has anything in the meantime, okay, uh, let me stop you because uh, we have sort of a time limit. Um, I'm going to ask people to ask questions, but I have one question because because I'm not unmuted. If a teacher happens to be tested positive, what happens to the rest of that class? Are they quarantined then, or, or do they? continuing to stay in school? It depends on the circumstances. If the teacher, if the, if the, the nurse is the head nurse and, and the assistant head nurse know the protocols down. So if they'll get the word that the teacher tested positive. So it, we've gotten some teachers that tested positive over the, over the break, let's say. So there's been no exposure. So nothing happens to those students, obviously, because they weren't in the classroom. If, okay. a student, if, a, if a teacher, if a teacher was to test positive, the nurse would talk to them about when was the last time you were in the building. And it depends sometimes if you're symptomatic or if you're not symptomatic, there's a look back period of, uh, I think it's 48 hours if you're symptomatic that says if anybody was in a certain area with you. So it's it right now, the area is if you spent, if you were within six feet of someone, 
for more than 15 minutes in a 24 hour period. So we set the classrooms up so there really is no reason for a teacher, generally speaking, to be six feet within any one student for more okay. than okay. That's then, good. If that's the case, if it is the case, then we'll send but those students will go home, they'll be quarantined and we'll okay. all right. Um if anyone wants to ask a question, please unmute yourself and ask the question. Um you got a question, Harry? Go ahead. I do. Yes. Thank you, Gary. Um, so before I go, um, thank you, Ms. Clark. Thank you, Dr. Ravali. You guys have done a really good job so far with um, helping the district deal with what's going on with COVID. Honestly, you guys have been dealing with some issues that would be called historic by any other name. So very well done. Um, the question I have mostly has to do with the future of all this. After the vaccine, a lot of us really started thinking about this being kind of the light at the end of the tunnel, trying to figure out what's going to happen after this. and at one point or another, all of my teachers have said that they've not had enough learning time. And at one point or another, all of my classmates have said that they're not paying attention to class. The fact is that a lot of people feel really disengaged right now. And I'm not sure about people who are below high school, but I'm sure they're also struggling. Like elementary stu schoolers are likely struggling with finding support systems. Middle schoolers are also likely struggling with what high schoolers are going through. And I think part of the issue these days is that we've kind of reached this learning deficit due to the pandemic where a lot of students are going to struggle to meet the standards next year because of all the learning they've lost this year due to the time constraints. So does the district have a plan to kind of deal with this learning deficit and make students more apt to deal with the standards they're going to have to deal with next year? I think I'm going to let Dr. Ravalli take that one because there is, I know that we've been working on a, um, on pursuing a grant for exactly that reason on, on to get some resources to, to help our students, the ones that have fallen behind to catch up. So Dr. Ravalli, if you don't sure. mind. Sure. So the short answer for that is Aaron. Yes. A plan is in the works and the plan would be, would, would, would be developed around our, our tiered system of support. So, you know, being a, uh, a student with us that we do a lot of assessment in the district and we're even assessing during these times and we're using that data to determine who may be most in need of that support. And then uh, as much as students don't sometimes like uh, work over the summer, uh, we do have some plan for leveraging the summer to uh, service students who um, are just exactly as you described, who have you know fallen way behind, who have uh, become disengaged, and we are um, hopefully going to get some support for that plan with regard to a grant that we put in for uh, just last week. But even without that, we still have some plan um, that would only make our that would only make our opportunities more robust. But even absent that grant, we will still have. Um, what we're calling um, learning recovery time over the summer. Do I think it'll bring us back to where we were pre-pandemic in you know eight weeks? Absolutely not. Uh, it's, you know you 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 are a hundred percent right. Um, there's no replacement for students in a class interacting with each other and interacting with a teacher. And we haven't had that experience since March. So we definitely have some challenges. Ahead, we do have some plans. We're using our data, and uh, um, we'll be talking more about those plans as we move forward. Thank you, thank you. Um, you have your hand up, Teresa. Uh, you have your hand up. Yeah. I have a question. Go ahead. For the excellent Go presentation, uh, uh, Mrs. Clark and uh, Dr. Raboli. Uh, my, uh, I understand Franklin Township in Somerset County has the highest number of COVID cases. Now, with this our school, are the incidents of COVID? I think, I think you froze, but I think the question was, what is the, uh, what does the number of COVID cases look like in our school? I think that's what you said. You froze at one yes. point, so I, I, yeah, and okay. The trend in uh, well, trend or, or decrease. 
Right. Uh, well, one good way for you to track that is one thing that Mrs. Clark, who is responsible for that, has done. She's created a chart on our website, and you can see um, the kind of COVID activity we've had in our schools. We've had um, not a lot of, of, of kid COVID cases. We've had staff COVID cases for sure. Um, we've not had much transmission in schools, which is a positive, meaning most of our cases were contracted uh, or were traced back to sources from outside of our schools. So um, overall, we think the strategies in place, and listen, we're not going to take credit. I mean, the strategies that we put into play are strategies that every school district has in play, directed by the Department of Ed. Um, think that that's been helpful and schools are pretty safe. We also have a very limited number of, of, of students in our schools right now. 70% of our families have elected to keep their children home and educate them through our virtual platform. So, you know, when you take that 30% and break it into two cohorts, you're talking about 15% of 2,000 kids that are typically in our high school. Can't even see a kid in the high school, you know? So, um, it's, there's a very limited number of folks. So the amount of the amount of cases uh, you'll see activity amongst the adults, but most of that traced back to sources outside of the school environment. So we're feeling fortunate that we haven't had a lot of outbreak in school, um, but we also recognize that the township has struggled uh, quite a bit, and we're sensitive to that, which is why we work so closely with Dr. Karazi and and the mayor and and the township council for making testing available as frequently as as we're able to um and we've even even done our due diligence in becoming uh going through the process to become a vaccine distribution site as a school district um but because of the shortage of vaccine within the state they put all closed dispensing applications on hold so we've gotten yeah. all the way through the process and we're waiting That's for that right. final approval should enough vaccine become available That's our school right. doctor and our wonderful team of a dozen nurses or so will vaccinate our folks uh right on our campus so we're that'd be, that'd, that'd hopeful be great. that that yeah hopefully that comes to fruition Thank you. okay that's okay you, you, you have a question that's our that's our other high school student. Go ahead, Rithika. Thank you so much. First of all, like Arian said. Yeah, yeah, can I speak a little louder? Uh, can you hear me? I can. Uh, okay. Well, just like Arian said, I'd like to thank you uh, guys for doing such an amazing job. And my question to you is, um, COVID-19 has been known to like spread asynchronously or um, so when not asynchronously, I mean, uh, not like, you know, without having uh, showing symptoms. I'm forgetting the word at the moment. Asymptomatic. Asymptomatic, I'm, I'm very sorry. Yeah. In an That's asymptomatic okay. manner. So, um, have there been placed like uh, precautionary COVID testings for uh, minimal like exposure in an asymptomatic manner? I think I think what you're asking is how do you control asymptomatic? Well, that asymptomatic spread and testing is the only way to do that. Uh, unfortunately, that isn't always so easy to get folks to participate to do that. As a school district, we did offer it, um, and and we plan on hopefully offering it again. We 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 went through a couple rounds of it. Uh, quite honestly, we did have some problem with the testing company in the lab. Uh, but we were able to get some folks tested. But ultimately, when you're dealing, you know, testing of teachers, that's easy for us because they're adults. Uh, they can sign their own paperwork, and we have no problem testing. So asymptomatic adults, we're able to deal with that. We do have testing available and, and do send folks for testing. With minors, it's a little bit more challenging because of the paperwork involved in getting parents to sign off on that. But um, we do intend on trying to return to some of that, but quite honestly, uh, that is really the only way to control asymptomatic, uh, asymptomatic spread is through testing. So uh, we've 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 tried. We're going to go back to it. 
and um, but we are working with the township to make sure that uh, we do make testing available every Sunday. And I know Dr. Karazi has even added days beyond Sunday at our schools. Right. Um, at, and <clears throat> although it's not directly uh, directly in the schools during the school day, at least it's available. And we did attempt to do it a couple times during the school day. But again, with the limited number of students attending in person, um, we're hopeful that they're taking advantage of what Dr. Karazi and the township is offering. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Ravali. I, I just wanted to, uh, first of all, thank you, you for providing the facility for us during the last few months, actually, and then you continue to do so. And I just wanted to let everybody know that every Sunday, at least until end of February, we will have free COVID testing. Starts at 11 o'clock till 7 o'clock, and every week we have anywhere from 450 to 850 people that they come. So if you could spread the word and let people know that we have this free testing available. And one of the reasons that we are offering this test is for those that do not show the symptoms to, to uh, go and uh, have the testing done. And if they can, uh, you know, if the test result is positive, at least they do not uh, transfer to other people. So okay. even if they don't have symptoms, we encourage them to go and test. It's free, no insurance, no, it's okay too. Thank you, Alex. Thank I just want to I just want to add to that because um, I've been in touch with uh, the rabbi Abe, who, who, as you know, Alex, uh, had the COVID testing in in my community. He has some kind of in with the governor, and he is waiting any time now to get his authorization so he can come into the adult communities and give the vaccine. And hopefully that should happen soon. So I just want to add that to, to, to the thing. Okay, um, Mary, uh, are, there, are there any other questions? If not, I'm going to ask Mary to wrap it up because we have some businesses to, to take care of. But if anyone has a question first, um, Please a ask it now, or 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 I'm going to ask Mary to conclude. Um, one thing I will say to Mary and Dr. Ravelli on behalf of the Human Relations Commission, I have to th uh, thank the high school and especially uh, Mike Pinnix, who put a, a, a together our annual. Martin Luther King of Breakfast. Alex was um, very much involved with that. I'm on that committee, but if it wasn't for Mr. Penix, we wouldn't have had this um, wonderful presentation that we had. So, so I have to uh, I have to thank you, Dr. Rowley, on behalf of the HRC. Okay, man. No problem. No problem, Gary. And I'll tell you, we wouldn't have a lot of wonderful presentations if it wasn't for Michael Penix. He he goes above and beyond. There's no question. So I will pass that message along to him, though. Okay, Mary, please conclude if you can. Yeah, and, and I, I agree. I work closely with Mike. We create these videos called Focus on Franklin, which is going to be the way I sum this up. I'll get everyone's email address um, from Gary, and I'll send you a, a PDF of the, the presentation. If you have any questions, you can just reach out to me as well. Um, so one of the ways that you can reach us, if you have any questions, is you can call me or you can... Um, Go to our website that has a lot of information about what's going on in the schools. Um, there's also um, there's a, a link there for our focus on Franklin videos, which are produced by Mr. Pinnock and have highlighted different things that are going on in the school. Much more fun when you're not remote because you actually get to go to the schools and take some pictures of the kids doing some wonderful things. But, um, we're hoping to get back to that. Um, and then, yeah, that's that's it. There's board of education meetings, which, if you don't know already, um, we now have a call in feature because of COVID. So you can call instead of coming and the meetings are now hosted at our new administrative campuses, which are at the former site of the consulate of mission. So that's on the 27th now. Um, and that's pretty much it. There's, there's some, the, there's a the few other slides talk about other work that we're doing in the district in terms of equity work 
and other you know community outreach things, some of the programs that some of the schools have. So just take a look at that. And if you have any questions, you just let me know. And I thank you very much for the opportunity to come and join you guys. Eric, as always, you, you were terrific. Dr. Ravalli, thank you for coming. Uh, you can obviously uh, stay on, but I know your time is uh, as hectic as mine is. So if you want to cut off, you can. Okay, I want to uh, continue the meeting. Uh, yeah, I just want to say uh, thank you to uh, Dr. Ravalli and Mary. Um, you know, Dr. Valley, your leadership in this uh, time of crisis is outstanding. That's um, our councilman, by the way. That's our councilman. Me. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We have met a few times. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, so I, I just wanted to express uh, uh, thanks on behalf of the council uh, to the uh, school system here. Uh, I think you have kept uh, everything under control and uh, keep the kids educated. Uh, I think that's the uh, key goal for you and us and uh, I want to congratulate the entire uh, staff uh, uh, for being there for us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Thank you for your support. Of okay. Course. Thank you again. Let's continue with the meeting. Uh, as always, uh, Johnny Tibbs has, has been attempting to uh, to get in and he can't. I, I've tried to get him in, but Okay, um, all of you uh, should have received the minutes for December 9th, and I need a motion to accept those minutes, please. Can someone please make a motion for me? I'll make, make a motion. motion. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, at the last uh, uh, reappointment for the council, I want to uh, announce that Lenora, Alex, Willie, John, Tom, and Edna were reappointed for another three-year term. So I congratulate you, and I'm happy you can continue with us. Thank you, also, Gary. By the way, for the previous one, you, you somebody made the motion, but somebody had to second it. Okay. Do I have a second? I second it. Okay, okay. good. Thank you so much, Alex. Sure. Um, uh, since this is the uh, first uh, uh, meeting of the year, I'm required to uh, put up for a, a vote the appointment of the uh, chairman and the vice chairman. So I need a, a motion if, 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 if anyone wants to take over as chairman, uh, <laughs> that's okay with me too. Uh, so I need a, a motion to the appointment of the chairman and a, a vice chairman who was always has been Edna, and she has told me that she would be willing to continue if she's so nominated. So I need I need nominations for a chairman and a vice chair. I would like to nominate uh, Mr. Gary Rosenthal to continue as the chairman. Uh, of the HRC, and I also would like to um, nominate uh, Ms. Edna to continue as vice chair. I second. Do I, sec Do I have a second for that? Yes, I second. Okay. Gary, you have to ask see if there's any other nomination before. Uh, we uh, other nominations? Uh, otherwise, uh, we have uh, to vote. All of them. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, now that's all I have. I, I I asked for a report on the youth center. They didn't answer. So, is there anything else that anyone wants to report on? If not, our next. The meeting is our next meeting is February 24th. Now, also, we are going to have an opening because Milo Thompson, who's been a commissioner for a long time, uh, unfortunately, uh, he's going to have to step down. He he's not well, so uh, even though his term of office is not up. Uh, he's going to step down. So I 
we'll have an opening. So if anyone knows anyone that wants to become a, a commissioner, please have them contact me with a resume and we'll take that under consideration. Is there anything else to report? Anybody else? Dr. Karazi, do you have anything else to report at all? I, I, I don't, Gary. I think, as I mentioned, please encourage people to take advantage of the free uh, COVID testing. Okay. And uh, so that's the, really the key for the next five weeks, at least the government is offering free COVID tests. After that, we don't know if it's going to continue, but for the okay. next five Sundays, we have it in our township. Okay. I was and able also, to. Also, Gary, I wanted to mention that uh, there are going to be some announcements about the uh, vaccine. And okay. The good. state has a website that you can register. Uh, sure. At least for those of uh, us who are 65 and, and above, uh, they, they are on the priority list. Um, of course, if somebody has uh, some health issues, they will be on that list also. So I, I encourage I can... everybody to, uh, you know, to please uh, spread the word. And Gary, I presume you have the, the link. If not, I can send it to you. Yes, yes. As a, as a um, matter of fact, I can report that I was able to get my first shot today. It wasn't easy. You have to stay on the website, and hopefully, uh, as as time goes on, it'll be easier. But it was not an easy situation. So. Yeah, but important thing is the register, so they will have your name on the list. Exactly. Um, I got mine a couple of days ago as well, Gary. And uh, but uh, you know, just uh, I had to go to Springfield today. I, I went to Springfield. Okay. Today. No, I was at the uh, Raritan Valley. So I, okay. I'm asking everybody that you know, Gary, maybe in an email you can send that link to everybody, and they can share oh, okay. with their friends and relatives and others. Okay, uh, that, we that just want to good. make sure that Franklin Township members, they will uh, register as many as possible. Right. Okay, if there's, if there is no other question, uh, I'll accept a, a motion to adjourn our uh, next meeting is February 24th. We have as our guest, uh, I invited a Township prosecutor uh by the name of Erica. I forgot how that's my language. Well okay, uh can I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Yes. Stan. Okay, we will we will see you uh, next month on the 24th. Uh, stay safe everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good night, folks. Thank you.